So if you're from the U.S. or Canada, the way things work is as you get older, if you live a long life, you often will end up living somewhere other than your own home. And that can be really, really expensive up in the States or in Canada. But in Mexico, it can be really affordable. And it's starting to be a thing that's growing here in Mexico. It's not something that's traditional here in Mexico to have long-term care facilities, but it's growing because there are so many foreigners who live here now. So I've got a great video coming up. I'm super excited. I've been wanting to do this video for quite a long time. And I am with Carrie and she's taking me to Ohana, which is a facility, an assisted living facility here in San Juan Cosala, about seven minutes from Ajijic on Lake Chapala. This is a beautiful place. And we are going to chat with these folks here, actually catching them in between meetings. There is a psychiatrist coming to see one of the people here and a surgeon coming from Guadalajara is going to be here to see one of the residents who recently had surgery. So we're gonna hop in in between these different visits and get a tour of the facility. So I'm here with Alonzo, who runs with his wife, the Ohana Assisted Living in San Juan Cosala, which is very close to Ajijic. It was just like a $7 cab ride over this morning. So I'm gonna have him introduce himself and tell us a little bit about this facility here. Well, my name is Alonzo. I, am, uh, I was born in Ajijic and I am a registered nurse. I went to the University of Guadalajara and also my wife and myself, we have a geriatric degree. So we have the Ohana facility here. We start our memory care in San Juan Cosala and run it for around five years. And then people was interested to have a place where they could forget about cooking, cleaning, shopping, but with people that they can still talking and doing things together. So that's when we open our independent living facility. It has been open since uh, 2019, just before COVID. And uh, it was hard at the beginning, but now everything is settled down better. My wife, Anna, she has also, she's a nurse and has also the same uh, geriatric degree. So one of the things that's top of mind for me is the price uh, compared to the United States, but we're not going to talk about that yet. We're going to talk about the facility here so that we can kind of understand what you get for that price that we'll talk about later. Our two facilities has a um, di different way to run it. In our memory care, we have uh, activities every single day from Monday to Sunday, and they have meals, three meals a day, two snacks in between. The activities are coordinated and given to them according to their level of uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. We try to challenge them, but not to the point to make them feel frustrated. So we'll give them things that they can do and they can enjoy. And that way we notice they are still able to work and be happy. We have 24 seven staff. We have during the day, five people and three at night. I guess at night is usually they sleep pretty well because we keep them busy. We try to change some of the pattern, especially when they come direct from the United States. They come taking many medicine, I mean, a lot of medication. So we try to cut off that as much as possible. And in our independent living, it is a bit different because people still independent and they like to do their own things like working on their computers or reading, watching TV, making videos. That's the kind of stuff they, they like to do. So it's interesting that Alonzo mentioned the decreasing the medication. I think that's a big thing here. And there's also a video in one of these corners that you'll find about someone who's U.S. medication for blood pressure was too much when he started to, to chill out and eat healthy and be in Mexico. So I think it's worth having things reevaluated when you make it down to Mexico because life is different than it is up in the States and your need for medications might change. But I'm going to go and have Alonzo talk us, kind of walk us through the facility here at the Independent Living so you can get an idea of what it looks like. We try to have a community here. Even when it's small, we have the capacity to have 12 residents at a time and when it's full. So it's gate, completely gated. We have a parking spot for each of them if they still have 
a car and are able to drive a car. So once we get into the facility after the parking spot, we have our living room area. Does, does it have a big television for everyone? It has a Shaw Direct, which it has a Canadian and American channels. After that, we can see our dining area. We have a big table where we offer breakfast, lunch and dinner the same uh, days from Monday to Sunday. And after that, we have 12 units to see. We have four downstairs and the rest are upstairs. And we're not worried about the stairs because we have an elevator to help people with uh, they have mobility issues or are using a wheelchair. Even when we have a big dining area, our residents can choose from having their meals downstairs in the dining area or on their own rooms, especially breakfast. Most of them like to have uh, breakfast on their own rooms and get together for lunch and dinner it'll depend on their days some will come down some other will stay on their on their rooms and part of this i think is because they have a nice view from their units some can see or have the mountain view and some other have the lake view which is gorgeous at this time of the year when it's raining often it seems like there are adult children who are more involved in helping to find mom or dad a place. So I want to know a little bit more about the relationship with the family versus the relationship with the individual and also people up in the States and really people moving to Mexico for this care, either with their parents or kind of parents moving down on their own. So I really want to explore that a little bit. We learned during uh, the COVID uh, pandemic that it was a chance to talk to people far from here. So many of our residents in our memory care, they're living with us, but the family is still working. In, uh, it could be in Europe or the United States or Canada. So we, we have the chance to learn that they can be chatting or talking by video calls especially. It is sometimes very hard to the families to understand the path of dementia or Alzheimer's, especially when you're not involved in this uh, situ medical situation, but it's very important and we'd like to train and talk to the families about what's the path of the dementia, what, it, what they can expect, and it is hard to predict when it's going to happen. They get concerned very easily about their loved ones losing weight, losing the memory, but sometimes when they don't recognize them, but they do love us, for example, it is probably upsetting because they feel like we are the family and they don't recognize us anymore. But listen, they see us every single day. So we become and they become family to us. So that's one of the things that sometimes for families are hard to understand especially when they are far away. Actually, it was really nice when we were walking around here with Carrie and Alonzo, and, and Carrie has someone who lives at Bodhi Village, uh, and there'll be a video in a corner about that, who is now a resident here, and hearing Alonzo talk about managing people who come to visit her and the things that might make her uncomfortable that people are accidentally doing. And I really got this feeling that Alonzo understands what people need and is able to help manage that from a perspective of visitors. It made me really feel like these, these guys know what they're doing really well. I'm actually going to bring Carrie into the conversation now and, and hear about the benefits to the family of having someone in Mexico in long-term care because there were some benefits that I hadn't really thought of. Now that I've been doing this a while, I'm, I'm seeing that there are different ways that families can access the care here. And one of those ways is that uh, often the family is retiring here and bringing mom or dad. And that way, especially when you consider the amount of money you're saving with senior care, 
but it's it's lovely to see when family members can live just down the road or sometimes it's even the husband or wife and come and spend quality time with the person not as a caregiver but as the family member and just enjoy them knowing that their care needs are met so that's one way is the whole family moves together some people already live here and they can have they'll either move with their family member or just visit regularly or because of the money that they're saving there's plenty of money in the budget to come frequently to visit a lot of people develop a relationship with a particular airbnb and that becomes their home away from home especially when they can work online so in in some ways it's bringing families back together it's not necessarily that the family's in fact it's it's infrequent that the family's not able to be in, to stay involved and then of course that as Lonzo mentioned today, a lot of times they're setting up Skype dates and FaceTime dates, but there, there's so many ways to ma maintain contact and still have the really high quality, affordable care. Okay, Julie, who's my sister, did you hear that? We're moving mom to Mexico because then we can all take vacations down to Mexico on a regular basis. So, uh, and I say that a little bit in jest, but not quite. Right now, often in the United States, Families are very separated. My mom lives in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My sister lives in Wausau, about three hours away, so that's not too far. I live in Portland, which is really, really far away. But often when there's more kids, they're all spread out. So having mom or dad in a, in a destination that's also a vacation destination, especially here, we are probably 45 minutes from an international airport that has flights just about everywhere. Guadalajara is one of the busiest airports in Mexico, I think. So you really can get many places. The Guadalajara airport is south of Guadalajara, so it's really easy to get into Ajijic and whatnot. So I hadn't really thought about that aspect of if you are still in the United States, the ability to come down on a regular basis and get together as a family because probably easier actually for me to get from Portland to Guadalajara than it is from Portland to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just because those are two small cities and Guadalajara flights go everywhere. That's something to consider too, but also the idea of moving down. There's uh, another couple that's staying at Bodie Village right now who came down, uh, actually it was two sons moved down here with their parents to put their parents into a facility down here. And as Carrie pointed out, it's just so much more affordable what you're paying for mom and dad, it makes it possible to retire early or possible to live somewhere else. So it opens up a lot of possibilities just because the cost of care is so high in the United States, or I really don't know much about Canada, but it's probably high there too. So we're filming here at Ohana. Uh, Carrie hooked us up with this, this interview in this location and being able to tour it. But there are many places, many options around here and many, I mean, really, I think this area is probably the hub of long-term care in Mexico, but it's growing definitely in other locations too. It's just, the reality is, this didn't exist in Mexico before. This, this only really exists for foreigners because in Mexico, families live multi-generations in the same house and take care of each other. So this is this is kind of a uniquely American need or uniquely uh, foreign need. But anyway, there's options out there. So I want Carrie to kind of give us, this is how you could move forward or take the next step. When people are considering doing something like this, it can feel really overwhelming. And so what I do and, and the colleagues that I work with in the assisted livings is we really try to help people chunk it out to make it simple. Here's what you need to do next. Here's what you need to do next. And very often we're dealing with family members whose loved ones need care they can't afford. They're trying to pick up the slack. They're becoming exhausted and having their own health issues. So we're having to support them to, to talk to parents who say, hell no, I'm never leaving this house, much less the country. I just worked with a couple of adult children. It took us nine months from hell no, I'm never leaving to being in a really high quality place and, and loving it here. Um, so so it's it can be really complex and layered, And but we're here to guide you. First steps, obviously, are we, we do an assessment. We wanna know what they like to do socially, what their health needs are, what their healthcare philosophy is, what the relationship with the family is. Uh, and 
what usually the first thing that happens is I'll help identify after that assessment I have a few four places that I think will be the best match for that individual and then one of the family members if they're not already here will come down uh, even help connect them to rides from the airport and to stay here and we'll tour those communities and based on what they're seeing they'll choose a community and then that community uh, the managers of that community will then help me support the family to take care of all the different steps that they, they need to to help with that transition. The tactical things, the emotional things, uh, really all that's involved in doing that. Carrie is kind of the key person right now. And I'm going to have her contact information down below so you can contact her. So there's definitely a need if you're in the world of long-term care and you want to move to Mexico. There's definitely a need for more people like Carrie who are going to create that connection between folks up in the U.S. and those people who are here on the ground in Mexico. And I really I think being here on the ground in Mexico is important. I mean, realistically, this could be something that is a decent paying job in Mexico because you're getting paid by people from the state. So this is one of those jobs where you can earn dollars and spend pesos by living here. So I just want to put it on plug. Carrie will, will help you get your, your contact her to if you're interested in this as a profession for yourself here in Mexico. So we're going to come back to Carrie in a moment, but uh, Alonzo is going to talk to us about what's included and also we're going to do that cost part. We have different prices in both facilities because the care is different. So I'm going to start with the independent facility. The cost right now it is 25,000 Mexican pesos, and that includes them three meals a day, Monday to Sunday, everyday cleaning, and uh, laundry service. Also, it's included uh, every Thursday we go to have uh, to do shopping to Ajijic or San Antonio. It depends on where they like to, to go. And after shopping, we go to have a lunch together to a, a restaurant they decide to go. So pretty much that's what is included on an independent facility. Also, we provide transportation for uh, medical appointments. It can be here on the area or also to see a specialist in Guadalajara. In our memory care facility, the price right now it is $1,800 a month and includes 24-7 care from mild dementia to advanced dementia and it inclu includes all the care and activities and meals except for medication and diapers. That will generate an extra cost because it is hard to know, especially for those, like I mentioned before, that come from the state, how much medications are they taking or the amount of diapers they are using. But it usually, the, the cost on, on diapers in Mexico a month, it will go from 1,000 to 1,500 pesos a month. So it's not, it's not very, very high. And the cost in our independent is basically 25,000, except for the two units that we have that are bigger, and it has an extra room, or they can be set as a, dining area or a living area or a studio that costs uh, 32,000 pesos a month. But is the, uh, we have two units that are larger than the regular ones. Great. So I'm going to let Alonso go back to work. He definitely stays busy here. And we're going to go back to Carrie for a moment. Carrie definitely stays busy too. But um, she's, she's here. We have to go back to Ahihik together. So I've got her for a little bit. Let's talk with Carrie about other facilities, costs, things like that, and also talk about costs of things in the United States because for someone like me, my mom isn't yet in that stage, so I don't really know what those costs are. So we've been just kind of chatting here before we get into Carrie's, Carrie's part, and two things that kind of came up, and one was strength and weakness of the peso. Definitely things change, and sometimes things are quoted in peso, sometimes they're quoted in, in dollars. Just something to think about is Really, over the last, I'd say, year, the peso has gained about you know twenty, thirty percent in value. So that does change your price in, in when you're looking at paying from the U.S. So it's something to think about. The other thing was the smell. It's eleven thirty. They are cooking lunch, and it smells like home. And I can remember when my grandmother was was in a facility near the end of her life, and I just really, I was young, and it really just, I don't know, the smell. It just 
I still have it with me and this feels like home. And I think that is the key here. Carrie was saying she's never seen two people to a room at a facility in Mexico. I, and I, I think this is what I was hoping I would find when I started to do this video was that not only is it less expensive here, but the quality of care and the quality of the facilities is actually better than what you would typically find in the US. I mean, if you've got like a huge budget, you could probably find something amazing in the US, but it's just so different, including when my wife's grandmother was in care in Portland seven years ago or so, and she was paying $10,000 a month for care in a small facility with six residents. And it just, it, it, although it was a home, it still felt institutional and it just didn't feel good. I didn't, like going there. I would like coming to a place like this. So I just wanted to add that. Now let's bring in Carrie for more information on cost. Most of the places here are, are like homes. They have anywhere between six and 12 residents. We don't have the really large assisted living communities yet. They're mostly family run. We work with families to determine what the level of, of memory loss is because some people have mild memory loss and it's very different from advanced memory loss. Some people can function mostly in an independent environment, but they do need some oversight and direction. Um, but all of the places, regardless of which of those categories they fall in, range in price from about 1,500 US a month to 3,000 US a month. Some of the places on the higher end, it might be because they need extra staff because they are awake at night, for example. But you can find quality care where everything is included um, except for some of the products, uh, and it's 2000 a month. Uh, sometimes there's someone who doesn't really fit into one of those categories, like they have some memory loss, but they don't really seem to fit either place because in independent places, people are usually entertaining themselves, but maybe they need a little bit of guidance to, to get out and do a little bit more, or they don't know how to self-direct around that. So a lot of times we can bring in, or the community, the assisted living community can bring in someone to, where the family can pay just a little bit extra to have some one-on-one -on -one time and go for walks or go out to a special event on their own. So a lot of times we can look at the the whole person and and build on top of even what the assisted living provides as just a matter of course. So I want to make sure that I, I bring back this point is that we are here along Lake Chapala and this is kind of destination for this thing. This is the area that is most developed in Mexico for this. Uh, Carrie said there's some in Tijuana, also San Miguel de Allende. There's some there, but it's a little more expensive than this area. Also think about altitude. We're a little bit high here. We're like at 5,000 feet here. So that's like Denver height, I think. San Miguel is even higher. So Sometimes that does matter for people who are older. So those are things to think about. Another thing I, I want to ask Carrie about is just like in-home care. What kind of options exist around that? In terms of in-home care, just hire, hiring people to come into the home, things are changing so rapidly all the time as more and more businesses open to support aging Americans and Canadians mostly. It's, I'm hesitant to even talk about it, but there are a couple of agencies that will manage in home care. And that way uh, you have someone else filling the slots. If you have people who are scheduled to come and help someone who is frail and needs assistance and that person can't come to work, if that person has a family member who needs them. So there are some agencies that are going to, that are more likely to make sure that all the slots are filled, even if someone calls off at the last minute um, and, and more entering the market. When people sort of make a plan, I'll move to Mexico, and then when I need some help, I'll hire, hire a caregiver. When they when they have that as kind of their what their plan is, I'm a little bit, I get a little bit nervous because first of all, it's, it's, it's rare that you only need one person. You usually need a team because, you know, they get days off, they have holidays, you can't work people 24 hours a day. It's usually a team that requires management. So if you have a family member who can manage that and step in, if, if there's a day where no one can come, uh, or if someone really just needs some services that it's no big deal, if, it, if it's supposed to happen on a Tuesday and it happens on a Wednesday, the, the, there's a shower or a, someone doing the meds. Um, so it's, there are a lot of moving parts and every situation is very different. So it's, it's hard to speak in generalizations.
but it can be really tricky to manage a care team. But for some people, it can work. So it seems like this could be a little complicated and it maybe it sounds like it's best when there is maybe if you're a couple and you need someone to come in and help once or twice a week and just kind of give someone a, a break with care, this might be a good option. But for having something 24 seven uh, is going to be complicated and it's actually going to be more expensive. So we kind of did the math roughly here and it was about 3,600 US dollars a month to have full time care in your home. And this is some someone who's not quite a nurse, uh, but you know, has, has some training. So that's kind of, that, that's about the cost. Now, if you hire someone yourself, if you're looking for a nurse, you are not a nurse, well, maybe a nurse, but some, someone to come into your home for by an hourly rate, you could be looking as low as, you know, four or $5 an hour. If you're working directly with someone, they may or may not speak English, but just to give you an idea there, back in the States, this is going to be costing in the mid thirties for how many dollars per hour for this service. But I, I guess the key here is that it, it can be a little bit tricky, but it's something that is improving continuously as more older people from the US and Canada are moving south. So I've been looking forward to doing this video for a couple of years now. Carrie and I have been chatting. Actually, last time I was supposed to do this video, I got COVID, so I couldn't obviously be around older people. This is pretty exciting stuff. I hope that this was a helpful video for you. Leave me comments down below. Carrie's not going to be reading those comments. So if you want to talk to Carrie, use her contact information down below. Don't leave something in the comments, but tell us about your experience or you know things uh, that you're thinking about down in the comments and join that conversation. Otherwise, I've got some videos here that are great. Actually, this one up here is someone who moved to Mexico when he retired and his blood pressure went almost through the floor because of the change in lifestyle. Check out that video too. Hasta luego.